Joshua Peterson here with Peterson Electric. Um, haven't done a video yet on de-ice melting equipment. I'll try to talk loud because there's a tractor over there digging a hole. Um, anyways, right here, we ended up doing some de-ice melt, two separate systems. One was 30 foot, another one was 160, so total 190 feet. Um, we went on this canal and this canal and, and broke it because he had to get his gutter replaced. Basically, in a nutshell, um, the math is this, is that it's going to be 0.6 watts a foot times 190 feet. We're right at about 11 amps. It's on a 15 amp circuit, so we're not quite at 80%. It's probably 70% of the circuit. Um, this stuff is more of a residential stuff by Easy Heat. And then you have a commercial stuff by Raycam, which is going to be more of a... Um, Probably for your piping systems that are underneath a garage um, or gutters that are icing up. Easy Heat does under tile floors for bathrooms and kitchens as well as for gutters. Um, there are kit, you have to know how many feet. There is a way to do that. Basically, um, in a nutshell, you're going to want to use a large measuring wheel. Um, I can show you that real quick. Similar to this, okay? You do not want to use a tape measure, you will not get it right. So use a measure wheel. You can pick those up at your big box stores. Um, once you roll it off, you have to feed it in a certain way. We fished in an outlet up here from the inside of the garage. So there is an outlet right there. We used an extension ring with some MC cable, which is rated to be up on the surface of drywall less than eight foot. Assuming it doesn't have physical damage, which it won't. Um, tucked it in, fished it in through the attic there, patched that hole, and came out through here. Very nice smooth look. Got our cover. Cover will cover all of this. And then um, we wrapped it around the gutter. Now let me show you this here, I'll take the phone. Okay, so this is kind of how we did this. The system, the first system comes over, wraps around, and comes up here, which is only 30 feet. Ended here, came back through the gutter. I'll try to get up here higher. Came back through this gutter. So you got a strap, a hook, and another hook to let it hang. Okay, it's a little cockeyed there. You don't want this to touch the gutter so it's gonna float. It does have a self-regulating thermostat, so a lot of people ask, hey, how do you turn it on and off? You don't have to worry about that. If you're done with it for the winter, unplug it. But the bottom line is it has to have two things happen. It has to be cold out, and then it also has to have moisture. This is also another self-regulating device right here where they actually are splicing your heat tape cable into the main cord. It is a 110 volt system, okay? You can order it 240 as well, but we did 110 because that's what he needed. Now you space this every 18 inches. Therefore, since it's a triangle, you space it every 18 inches up here as well. And then you bring it back and forth, up and down, up and down, up and down. And you have to use a screwdriver, a big strong flathead to get that pried up and get that under. It's got teeth to catch. Don't want to pinch this cable. Here was the real pain in the butt about this is you had to come over here, start it with your cord and feed it gently through the gutter. Then you go down your downspout, okay? Once you go back down your downspout, you come back up all the way through and around, and then you take the extra and go up the canal. We were hoping we could come all the way down. We didn't, but we ended, we at least got one run all the way down, okay? Again, you gotta be very, very patient getting that stuff in, because if you nick it on that gutter, you gotta rebuy it. You do have to come down the downspout as well, okay? And that'll feed through with a loop and down and back up. We did not go all the way through this downspout because this gutter can move up and we don't want that to get damaged. So the loop, there is no T. Some systems will do that, but we did not. That's what was so tedious. 
I had to put this down spot all the way back together and it just loops just right there. It goes right back up and then you feed it. So two separate systems into that outlet. Again, 0.6 watts a foot times 190 foot. Okay, you're gonna get your math there. You can do it by wattage divided by your voltage to get your amperage or whatever you choose there. But that's how we got our 11 amps. So we know our circuit will hold it. Uh, we know that it's um, a geofied circuit as well because this stuff does not have a GFCI in the end of it. Some of them actually do have a GFCI on the end of the connection point. This system did not. Um, and then we'll see how it goes. Yeah, so it's gonna wait till winter time. So hopefully in the next two months, I don't get a call back, something's wrong. But right now that we implemented the system, you know, the circuit's not picking anything up. But once it actually turns on and stays on, that's where we'll see how that current draws. If we get in trouble and it does trip that circuit, because there is a couple things on the, on the, in the garage, he only uses those circuit, those outlets as a point of just um, radio and charging a battery and his, his little uh, charger for his Harley Davidson in the winter. But other than that, there's no refrigerator on that circuit because he's got two other circuits in the garage. If you have a general circuit in your home and you're built in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, it's, chances are it's shared with the bathrooms if it's out in the garage to the front and the back outlet as well and one at the bottom of the stairs. So if your home was in the 90s or 2000s, it probably will be front and back. And if it's even sometime in the last, since 2010, it might be actually a circuit that's only designed to have the front back outlet in the garage. Um, but you wanna keep in mind that if your fridge is on that circuit, it's not gonna kick on in the winter as much, but when it does kick on and it's cold out, that ice melt will probably kick on. You could trip your breaker. Um, if you're tripping your GFCI, might be a problem with this system that you installed um, but again we were very gentle didn't cut anything had a lot of sharp abrasive screws in there to keep that metal together so just be attentive to that um, other than that if you guys are using that system that you put in the floor they have called what we call a TDR um, and uh, those are little kind of like a tattletale device I have one on my truck and basically you hook it up tell the guys done with his mortar um, if the circuit is working fine it does not beep but if the circuit opens up, it actually beeps. So um, it's a device that we use and we keep it on at all times until all the tiles in, because if anything gets damaged on the heat cables in a floor system, it's, it's, you can't get to it. Um, anyways, thanks guys for joining us. Hopefully this helped you out. And um, usually I don't give a lot of hints on how to do certain things, so I'm trying to help you out with this. And uh, thanks guys, bye.